Hey everybody, IB Crazy here with another unscripted video. After the response I got from my previous unscripted video about the cost of R&D, I decided to shoot this one showing you what R&D actually does look like and not just the failures. What I'm developing here is the Crosshair Extreme for 2.4 gigahertz, and that's right here attached to my vector network analyzer. Now this was designed on a computer. And I've repeated many times that computers are imperfect, but if you can see this, and I'm not sure if the camera can focus on this, but at 2.4 gigahertz, I'm at 1.19 SWR, and that looks great. But I can tell you that this is misleading because what I need to test are the emissions. And to do that, I've got this over here. This is a five turn helical right hand circularly polarized. And I am going to be measuring the signal strength received by this, and then I'm going to compare it to this. This is a left hand helical. So let's put this in here. Now, before I go on, I know this test is imperfect. The reason being, this isn't exactly an anechoic chamber. I've already got this piece of metal for signals to reflect off of, plus the wall here, that one, the floor, all that kind of stuff. It's not perfect, but what I'm trying to do is get the antenna the best I can by tuning it. And what I'm tuning it here for isn't so much gain, but axial ratio. That is the ability to rotate the signal. In the case of the Crosshair Extreme, the height of the elements over the reflector more or less sets the gain. However, it's the phasing of the elements that sets the axial ratio, and that's what sets circular antennas apart, the ability to rotate the signal. And that's what I'm going to test here. Here. So I have to change the mode here into what's called vector voltmeter. Then I've got to select my frequency and I want 2430 megahertz. That's about the center of the 2.4 gigahertz band or at least a legal band. All right. Then I'm going to have to aim these two antennas at each other. And this is going to give me an idea of where my signal strength should be. So, okay. Well, usually helps if that's straight. That's, oh, well, as you can see, it's not the most stable thing. I'm bumping between, well, if my hand gets near it, now I'm minus four, I'm minus two to point two. Let's call this close enough. It's not perfect, but it's as close as we can get. Now I'm actually done with that five turn helical. Now it's time for the three turn helical. So taking a look at this, this isn't looking very good, not at all. I'm gonna move this a little bit out of the way to see if that helps, but yeah. I'm at minus two dB, that stinks. That means this thing's hardly rotating at all. It just plain doesn't work. Now granted, if I turn it like this, it starts to look a lot better. Um, and what that's caused by is some of the inaccuracies in its ability to rotate the wave. So what I need to do is figure out what's going on, what's the problem. And that's what these pieces of electrical tape are for. What they're going to effectively do is make each element look like they're longer than what they actually are. So let's see if I get any improvement there. Hmm, I lost some signal. I was at 2.2, uh, maybe not. I mean, basically the same, but definitely didn't make it better. So let's try making this element a little bit longer. And this is the mid-length element. There we go. I, I would consider that to have almost no effect, maybe minimal effect. I, I, I already dropped one dB. That means I'm losing circularity. But ugh, does that mean it's bad? I don't know. By the way, guys, I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm just guessing. All right. So now I'm covering up the long elements. Okay, that made a bit of a change. It seems like changing the long element had the greatest effect. Let's see what happens if I then remove, you know, make the short element look shorter. And what I'm doing here is effectively changing the phasing. Okay, so. Huh. Uh, not a whole lot of change, but it almost seems that that short element does, uh, element does very little. Um, we got a little change. But mm, let's 
take this off. Okay, a little bit better. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's where I was with the whole thing taped up. Um, so, next step is to trim it. So making the elements all look longer didn't seem to phase them any better. So the next thing I have to do is try trimming these elements. And what that does, um, a long antenna or a long dipole, which is effectively what this is, is three sets of cross dipoles. A long dipole looks like it's inductive and a short dipole looks like it's a capacitive. So by trimming them, I'm making each element look more capacitive or more in the lead side. I'm going to take a blind guess and I'm going to guess that my long element is actually a bit too long. So we shall see what happens. I'm gonna trim just a small amount off of the long element. Okay, and you see we're already we're already looking better, so I guessed right. This is a guesswork. If I was wrong, I'd have to desolder that element and go get another one. Um, I'm at like minus six now. That's better than minus two to minus three. So let's keep going. I'm trying to cut the same amount off each side, but it's not exactly a precise science. This is just to get me in the ballpark. Well, we're looking a little bit better. Um, but once I hit the, remember, it, dB is a logarithmic scale. So the amount I trim off have to, has to become less and less and less as I get closer. So, well, let's see. Let's trim a little bit more off it and see what happens. but I don't know how much more I should trim off. I'm kind of puzzled here. So, you know what? I'm gonna try the middle element. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. And I'll come back to this long element if I think that's a good idea. Well, there's a problem. My SWR has increased too much to the point where I'm gonna call this a no-go. I don't know what's going on, but what I can do is go upstairs and get another element, re-solder it back on, and resume. So, uh, yeah, I just... Yeah, I, I really don't know what's going on. Um, well, let's go get a fresh element and see how that goes. Okay, so I've soldered on a new element onto my antenna, and I've made one other change. I've raised the element above the reflector one eighth of an inch, so just a little bit. We're gonna see if that makes much of a difference. Um, looking at it, it seems I'm off to a good start. Now granted, my gain is lowered just slightly, but I'm showing, well, when my hand's out of the way, about minus six dB, but whereas previously I was at about minus two. So I might be on to something. Then again, I might totally be wrong. So, well, let's just do this. Hey, that's not half bad. Let's see how my uh, SWR is looking before I go on. Ah, uh, SWR is out. Well, time to get a new element. Okay, so I'm very close. Very close to where I want this to be. It's good, but I don't know which way to go. I'm going to resume trimming the long element here. Okay, so now I've got to the point where I harmed the performance noticeably. All right, so.
Let's see if I can attempt to undo that little move. Ah, pretty much back up to where I am. See, adding the tape makes an element look longer. Let's see if I can trim the mid-length and get her, get her back. Yeah, it's coming back. SWR dropped. This is looking very, very promising. I'm getting there. Well, I trimmed off more than I wanted to on that one, so. <clears throat> Well, it's not perfect. I think my height over reflector is just slightly off. So the antenna is no longer elliptical. It is showing circular. Oh, look, I'm at minus 18 to minus 20 dB. And I rotate it. Granted, I'm seeing more rejection. So what I'm measuring is whether it's circular or if it's like circular like this or elliptical like this. Now we're in such a low signal strength that these numbers will jump all over the place with just a very small variation. So what I'm looking at here is this appears, this appears to be very, very good. The SWR is back to 1.4 though, still higher than I want, but I can probably make some adjustments for that. I have one last test, and that's to figure out. Where we left off. Let's see where we ended up. Well, you look at that. I increased the gain to 2.1, where previously this was about zero. So I've improved my axial ratio and improved my gain. Okay, guys, so I am now at the ninth revision, and I finally think I have this right. My SWR isn't perfect. It's 1.35, and you can see the center frequency is over here, over to the right, so it's a little bit higher than it's supposed to be. But I'm not too worried about that because there's some tricks I can do to adjust that. So on the vector voltmeter here, uh, you can see I'm a minus 21 here. And then if I rotate it, you know, I'm minus 22, 23. So what that's telling me is now my signal is circular and not elliptical. Granted, it's not perfect, but it's what I would consider close enough. But again, this is a prototype. It's not the final revision. Well, in my travels up and down the steps, constantly getting new elements and soldering them on, I figured I might as well show you what the final design hopefully will look like. But again, nothing's set in stone. So this is what I hope the final will look like. So notice the brass tube is not there and the SMA is offset here in the back. So you should be able to screw this right into your receiver and hang it from your receiver. But my intent is to in include an extension cable that you can screw into this in case you have a remote receiver. And that's what this is for. So this, you can see it's hexagonally shaped. That's because I intend to solder a brass nut in place so you can screw it right into a tripod and then run an extension cable to your receiver. You also notice something else. You see these little, this little trace here. This is a coplanar waveguide. Now, in the final rev, I'm hoping this is going to be straight, but in order to fix loss problems, I've made these one half wavelength long to, to avoid any impedance problems. And to make it fit, I just had to curve it. So the coplanar waveguide goes around here through the board, and well, it's supposed to go over to this side, but for some reason, my Gerber files were incomplete despite looking right on my screen. So I have ordered replacements of these this morning, hopefully, uh, they should be here in about a week and a half. Uh, I will have to revise the file for this element and order them. And I don't know how many more iterations this is going to take, but I'm very close. So this is what R&D really looks like. Just because I have this doesn't mean I have it working. It means I'm a little bit closer. I'll probably go through three or four more iterations of this before I finally have this done. Why? Because I'm also missing one other component. 
the cover. This element needs to be covered up to protect it from damage, and that's going to change everything. So I just need to get it close in free air, then start putting a cover over it and repeat this process again. Now the crosshair extreme is really, really wide bandwidth, so chances are it won't affect it too much and only one more iteration will be required to get it right. But I want to point out at the beginning of this video, the SWR looked good, but the axial ratio was terrible and the signal was highly elliptical. Therefore, it wouldn't work. And I'll admit, the only thing I did to create this element was took the 1.3 gigahertz and scaled it down to 2.4 gigahertz and well, started from there hoping it would be close. And well, it wasn't even close to working. So with that guys, I'm gonna end this video here. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. Um, and as always, keep them flying.